In this video, you're gonna learn how to create a subscribe button animation for your videos. Keep watching. Hey everyone, it's JJ from Wondershare Filmora here to empower your inner video creator. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already and hit that notification bell so you're always updated on our next video releases. Custom animations are something that all creators want for their channel, but sometimes they can seem pretty tricky to pull off. However, once you know what to do, it's pretty simple. I'm gonna walk you through creating your own subscribe button like this one. Let's get started. We're creating an animation that can be exported as its own video and then imported into all of your future projects. That means it will need a background that you can make transparent. So to start off, let's go into sample colors and find the bright green option. Drag it into Video Track 1 and drag its edge so it lasts about the same amount of time you want your animation to be. Mine's going to be about 4 seconds. You can always adjust it later, but for now we're going to lock this track so we don't accidentally move it. Next, let's move on to designing our subscribe button. Go back into Sample Colors and drag the bright red into the track above your green background. Select the red in the Video Preview and drag its edges to make it into a small rectangle. Then drag it to wherever you want it to appear in your video. I'm going to put it in the center near the bottom. Go to Titles and drag a text effect into the track above your red button. Basic 6 is probably the easiest because it doesn't have any graphics or animations you need to remove. Double click your title in the timeline and type in subscribe. Next, I need to add the mouse cursor. I found a free PNG with a transparent background using a Google image search. So just type in mouse cursor PNG to find your own. It's important that the image you choose is a PNG with a transparent background. If it doesn't have a transparent background, or if you don't save it under a PNG format, this won't work. Now let's go back into Filmora and import this PNG. Next, drag it to the track above your text. Since everything has had its own track, that'll be track number 4. Adjust the size of the cursor in the preview window and drag it to where you want it to sit. Now let's animate our design. The first thing I want to do is to animate my button so it pops up. I'm going to do this with keyframes. Double click on the red button in the timeline and then to the animation tab and click customize. Move it to the one second timestamp on your timeline and click add to create a keyframe of the standard size. Now jump back to the beginning of your timeline and adjust the scale of the red rectangle down to zero. This will create a new keyframe. If you play your clip, you'll see the rectangle pop up and grow. The text needs to be animated as well, so double click on it and choose Advanced. I want the text to appear on the full size button using an animation and then vanish using the same animation after a few seconds. Choose any animation you like and click to apply it to your text. In the Advanced Text Settings, the timeline under your text will appear to have darker areas on either side. These dark areas are the periods of time taken up by your animation, and the light area in the middle is a period of time your text is just sitting on screen. You can change the length of the intro and outro animations by dragging the white brackets in the text timeline. I want the animation to be pretty fast, so I'm going to make these dark areas smaller. Now let's animate the mouse cursor. I'm going to do this with keyframes again, so start by double clicking on it in the timeline and then again clicking in the animation tab and choosing customize. Jump forward to find the point in which the text intro animation is complete and then add a keyframe. Then move a couple frames back and drag the cursor in the preview panel until it's not in the frame. A new keyframe will be created. If you play your video, you'll see your cursor travel from the outside of the frame to the button. Now let's animate the click. Start from the point where your cursor has reached the button and jump forward a couple of frames. Then scale the cursor down a bit. Next, jump forward another couple of frames and then set it to its original scale. This will create two keyframes, one for each time you change the scale. To really sell it, add a sound effect and then time it with a click. Like this. To animate this out, double click on the red solid and then add a keyframe of the current scale. Then move a couple frames forward, then scale it back to zero. We already set the animate out setting for the text so adjust it here to match when the solid animates out. For the cursor, set a keyframe of the current settings. 
Then move a couple frames forward and drag it out of the view panel. This will make the cursor leave the frame. Watch it back to make sure that everything is in place and that you like it and then click export. Now you'll be able to import this clip into any video project or drag it into the shared media so you can always have it on hand. To use it, drag it into the timeline track above your main video footage. Double click on it and then check the box next to chroma key. And there you go, your very own custom animated subscribe button. Are there any other animated graphics that you're curious about? Let us know in the comment section below. We love receiving tutorial suggestions, so let us know what you wanna learn. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. I'll see you guys next time.